welcome my lovely ladies and handsome gents oh today's video is so special it's so special so special i'm wearing one of my craziest looking outfits in an homage to the creator of today's fragrance not the actual nose but the original creator salvador dali Um, I'm actually today showing you a fragrance I am so excited about. It is Dali Sime from Salvador Dali. From the company actually is called Coffin Lux or Coffin Lux. Coffin Lux? Coffin Lux. And this is the bottle. Look at that. Yes, it is. It is exactly as it looks. It is a nose and lips and a chin. This fragrance is called Dalissime or Dalissime. I think it's pronounced Dalissime. And uh, this is actually modeled after one of his paintings called Christmas. This is the front of the box. My ring light is reflecting in it. And the name of the, the um, artwork is called Christmas. Uh, I'll show you the artwork actually here or here or probably taking up the whole screen So I learned about Salvador Dali fragrances not uh, not long ago pretty recently actually and uh, I want to buy them all but I have to start somewhere because they're not giving me this stuff you know It's sexy. It's it's a floral, definitely a floral. Um, you know, uh, well, I'll tell you a little bit more about it. But first, I just wanted to show you this. And uh, what you pick up first is really like warm peach, a warm peach. Okay, Salvador Dominic Felipe Jacinto Dali. Dominic Marquis de Pulsol. That's his whole name. Um, the uh, fragrance Dali Sime launched in 1994. The nose is Mark Buxton. Um, the company he works with is Luzi, L U Z or Z I. Forget those notes. Let's dance. You like my weird? <laughs> it's the weirdest thing I own. And it's, of course, it's faux, faux fur. No real fur here. No real fur here, friends. You know, it grosses me out, actually. It goes beyond the, um, the cruelty-ness of it, the cruel, the, uh, The industry I just can't stand it it grosses me out like yep I, I think they're gorgeous like you see a lot of these a lot of these beautiful old pieces of fur that cost people so much money you see them in like thrift stores and stuff I saw the most gorgeous long fur coat the other day well a couple weeks ago in a thrift store for five dollars and I was like oh man it was a, such a thing of beauty but it's like you know it's a it's it's a memoir of something that we don't really do that much nowadays. We're not that into fur now. But I just think it's gross. You smell it, it smells like nasty skin and like, <laughs> anyways, I don't wanna, I don't wanna taint the Dali Sime video by that, but I do love fake fur. I love faux fur. Continuing on, Mark Buxton has 165 perfumes in the Fragrantica database, including Burberry Summer, Cartier, Pache de Cartier, Fraicheur Mint. That might be two fragrances. I don't know. I can't read my writing. I'm sorry. Uh, five fragrances for Givenchy. Seven for House of Sillage. 25 for his own fragrance line. And three more Dali fragrances. Fabulous Two, 
uh, Delicime, Fabulous 2 Delicime, and Laguna. The notes, the top, peach, apricot, pineapple, and plum. I really think that the peach, the peach, the apricot that comes through, I don't smell pineapple, but the middle notes are tagiti, tagitis, 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 it's marigold. <laughs> Um, and I love the smell of marigolds. It doesn't smell sweet. It just has this really nice smell. Mm, something really satisfying about putting your face in a marigold. Uh, and also jasmine and rose, narcissus, and lily of the valley. That's all mid notes. And then the base notes are vanilla, sandalwood, musk, lychee, amber, and tonka bean. So those are the, uh, the notes. I want to tell you a couple things about Dali. Uh, this fragrance was launched in um, 1994, uh, and it was in honor of it was in honor of his wife Gala or Gala, Gala, Gala. Uh, in honor of Gala's would have been her uh, centenary centenary year of her birth, hundred years. Well, my mom would be a hundred years old if she were still alive this year. Um. Dali believed that fragrance was the, quote, most beautiful messenger of memories. I think most of us can agree with that. Um, now his brand, or this brand rather, launched in 1985, but uh, his first fragrance was created in 1983. And uh, what I thought was really cool when I read up about this was that um, Dali and Gala were both still alive when they agreed to go through with this fragrance line with their name on it. So I think that's pretty cool because a lot of times nowadays, you know, uh, get a, people get a license and then they produce a product under whatever name will sell them the license. And while I don't really have anything against that, I think it's nice to know that they kind of knew what was gonna be happening to their name, to Dali's name, you know, uh, rather than just like, you know, oh, there's some perfume company that they they like Salvador Dali or whatever, and they're gonna put his name on their fragrance, but it doesn't have anything to do with him. Well, these did. And also too, um, shoot, I know that they smelled one of the first fragrances at least. Um, they approved one of the fragrances and I don't know which one that was, I'm sorry, but I did read that they did that. But then when I went back for my information, I couldn't find that again, but I did read that before. Um, however, it's not the first fragrance that Dali was associated with. Dali actually collaborated with Elsa Schiaparelli, the famous designer, to create a fragrance called, to release a fragrance called Le Roy Soleil. Uh, and Dali designed the bottle himself. And it is from his watercolor, uh, Le Roy Soleil, which was uh, completed in 1945. Um, Dalisime was created for Gala, Dali's wife. Gala and Dali met in 1929. They lived together for 10 years. <gasps> All that time ago, people were doing that. People were shacking up long ago, folks. It ain't no new thing. Um, and I don't care about it, by the way. I'm just saying, oh, look at that. Um, um, okay, they were married. They met in 1929. They lived together for 10 years before having a civil service wedding in 1934, and then a Catholic wedding in 1958. So they had a, they remarried with a a Catholic wedding. She was his muse directly inspiring and appearing in many of his works, and some are signed with both their names, saying, quote, it is mostly with your blood, Gala, that I paint my pictures. Gala passed on June 10th, 1982, and she was the serious perfume lover, and she had a, apparently a huge collection of fragrance. Dali was an olfactory enthusiast who experimented with making his own fragrance concoctions using materials from his art supplies. Seeking more animalistic notes, more, sorry, more animalic notes. He even added aspic and goat manure from his backyard 
to the fragrances he created. He had a strange desire to smell like a ram that passed by his window daily. Not surprising when you know who it is. So it's nice to know that both Salvador and Gala, Gala uh, played significant roles in the creation and approval of the line. Pretty cool. But I know you want to know, what's it smell like? Okay, what's it smell like? According to Fragrantica, 92 people felt it smelled like Venezia Postello, Venezia Postello from Laura Biagiati. Venezia Postello from Laura Biagiati. 71 people felt it was like Frank Oliver by Frank Oliver. 24 people felt it was like Inizio by, no, L'Aqua di Fiore by Inizio, I believe. L'Aqua di, di Fiore. L'Aqua di Fiore by Inizio. There you go. 23 people felt it's like Phantasm by Ted Lapidus. Phantasm by Ted Lapidus. And 17 people felt it's like Miss DuPont from S.T. DuPont. Miss DuPont. Miss DuPont. Okay, so I just also wanted to tell you a couple things. The, because, because this fragrance, Dalissime, uh, and a lot of the um, Dali fragrances aren't really widely known, um, you know, you don't find them everywhere. I'd never heard of them until I started doing this channel. So I started researching a lot of fragrances that I had never heard of before. But I wanted to tell you what some other people's opinions of it were. Um, many noticed apricot and peach up front and i did too they felt it was unique strongly some people thought it was strongly artificial like hairspray i kind of agree with that too i'm sorry to say because it does have a little something in it that's off-putting to me but i still really like it i still think it's really like it's a floral but it's like a really strong sensuous Pull them in, floral. My husband likes it. Um, more peachy, less rosy. Someone thinks it's a more peachy, less rosy version of Nahima by Guerlain. I don't find that to be true, but someone else did. Uh, they said it was like honeyed tobacco. Yeah, I think so, absolutely. Honeyed, floral, fragrant, exotic fruit feel. Honeyed, floral, Fragrant, exotic, fruit feel. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, warm and fruity. And I think it reminds me, I have to style it right, you know. Uh, it reminds me like, like an exotic alcoholic beverage that is a lot stronger than you think it's gonna be. You go to drink it, you're like, oh, this is nice. Oh, I'm having a good time here in wherever, Bahamas. And I'm like, yeah, everything is going to be great. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you're like, boom. You had no idea there was whatever that was in there that knocked you out. But that's what this fragrance reminds me of. Um, and someone said, and I thought this was pretty spot on too, and kind of funny, like preserves stored in a musty cellar. <laughs> yeah, I can kind of see that but it's good it's a good thing it's like you know not like fresh it's not like fresh peaches it's not like fresh anything it's more like sexy smoldery fruit like mm, like a sensual mm. it's really sexy these fragrances i I'm excited to try more. I got another one on my list that maybe you'll hear about soon, but I haven't got it yet. I have to pace my purchasing. 
uh, but I sure do like this one, and uh, I think you might too. So that's it for this video, my lovely ladies and handsome gents. If you like videos about fragrance, if you like videos about makeup, if you like videos about skincare, if you like videos about flowers, and the occasion video, video, video about something else, you might want to subscribe. You might want to. I know you might not. But I'm just re just reminding you, you have the opportunity to subscribe. And if you like this, please give it a like. Give it a thumbs up. I appreciate it very much. It means a lot to us YouTubers, you know. If you just... If you, if you like the content at all, you thought, well, there was something interesting, even though she was too wacky or whatever. If you, like, if you got something out of it, it's really nice to give the creator a little thumbs up. So we do really appreciate it. So thank you very much. I'm Bother Reviews Lady, over and out.